Welcome to this video where we'll be looking at some of the exam questions from the mathematical methods exams. This time we'll be looking at the 2010 mathematical exam and this is exam number one and this is the one that uh, students are to do this exam without a calculator and without any notes. Now the only notes that they actually give you is the formula sheet and what I've done is just uh, taken the formula sheet and I suggest all students to make sure they're very familiar with the different formulas and as you can see there's a formulas for calculus and the product rule and the chain rule and we'll be using in this particular question so let's go now and have a look at uh, this particular question it's uh, question 9 and if you have a look at it when you when you first start these exams don't panic there's always an easy mark to be obtained by just looking over and keeping your cool. Now here they've given you this graph. They've told us that this is the graph of x log ex and this is how it's drawn. And they're asking us to find the derivative of x squared log ex. And then they're saying to us, but guess what? You're going to use the result from part A to help you to find the shaded area between 1 and 3 and then give us the shaded area, the answer, in this format. And this is where the marks are, as you can see, three marks. So let's see how we start off. It's an interesting question. So we look at this first and we know now that to do this question here, you will need to use the product rule. Now the way I like to use the product rule is I like to tell my students to call this one U and always call this one V and keep using it always the same way. So we've called this one U and take the DU DX and we've got 2X. We call them this one V and taking the derivative is 1 on X. Now, even if you didn't know that, even if you forgot, well the VCA were very generous in giving you the uh, the formula sheet so they, they actually gave you the formula sheet and, and that would have been really easy for you to be able to look at the formula sheet there it is and to see that uh, the derivative of that of uh, log e x is 1 on x so let's return back to the, the question so there it is. Now we use the uh, chain product rule, I should say there. So that's a little bit of an error there. So we use the product rule and we get this. And that was an easy mark. Well, if you kept your cool. But now let's go on to the, the next section. And the next section is using this result, we are to obtain the answer to this. We needed to find the area between 1 and 3. So what do we do here? Well, let's have a look. Now, this is what we really need to find. We need to find the area between 1 and 3 of this expression. Now, why did they get us to do the derivative? Well, can you see a connection? Let's have a look. This is the derivative, that was the function that got us to do and now they want us to find this area, now hey hang on a second if you look at this, if you could just um, rearrange this you could actually get this now there's where the jump is and some students can't see that that the reason they got you to take the derivative of that is so that you could see that there's a connection between taking the derivative of that, which is that, taking the antiderivative of that, is this. So there's the connection right there. So what do we need to do now? Well, we need to take the antiderivative of that. But that's 2x log e. It's not x log e as we requested because we, we have to find the area between here and here. And as we've already seen, we need to find this. 
So where's the connection? Well, just bear with me. Notice 2x log is not x, so we divide it by 2. So I divide this by 2, and I kept it there. Now, I've taken the 2 a half out, so I've got this expression here. Now, this, if you work out the d antiderivative of that, well, that becomes x squared on 2. Bring it on the other side, and guess what? There's that expression. That's the one we want to evaluate. Now, we want to evaluate that between 1 and 3. And so what I've done here is another little trick. I didn't want to get into fractions. So I took out the half and wrote it like this. So we've got x squared log ex minus x squared on 2. So there's the half there, and there's the half there. Took them out. Now, we want to do an integration which means we want to go from 1 to 3, so I'll go 1 to 3. So whatever's on this side is equivalent to this side. And now we have to be very, very careful. So we need to put in the 3 first. So we put it in. So that means 3 goes into the x, and 3 goes into there, and 3 goes into there. Then take away, take away, and we put the 1 in. 1 goes there, 1 goes there, 1 goes there. You get this. Now, keep your cool. Work out this. So it's 9 log 3. Take away 9 on 2. Take away log e1. Now, take away and a take away becomes a positive a half. Okay, so still keeping your cool. Now, what have we got? 9 log e3. Take away log e1. We use one of the log rules, which basically means 3 over 1. So this becomes... 9 log e3 minus 9 on 2 plus 1 on 2. They have the same denominator, so we just take this away from that. So we've got minus 8, so this becomes minus 4. And now we multiply through by the half, and we get this. So what does this become? 9 on 2 log e3 minus 2. How did we get minus 2? 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. Now, you haven't finished yet, because if you look at the question, it says, use your answer to find the area of the shaded region in the form of A, where A and B and C are non-zero. So you have to really identify what A and B and C is. And so we can do that. A is 9 on 2, B is equal to 3, C equals minus 2. So there's our answer. Now, there were a few things that you had to be aware of in this type of question. Where were the little tricks? Well, one of the little tricks was, you know, the, the big jump. Did you realize that if you took the antiderivative of this, it would give you that, the original function? And then you had to see that there was this 2x log e, which was very similar to x log e. So now you have to, what I do, massage, divided by half. So that was one of the tricks. And the other thing is, when you did work this out and you collected everything together, which was this expression here, and I'll post this up on my website so you'll be able to see this working out solution. When you do this, when you actually worked out the integration, remember you went from 1 to 3, well, you had to put 1 to 3 here and integrate as though you're do an integration on this side too. So you had to be able to put that in. And when you did put it in, some students might have had some difficulty working out this um, uh, 9 and uh, 9 uh, log uh, e3 take away the log e1. So they might not have been able to do that simplification there, which we can see uh, right there. So, so that that was uh, that concludes that question. It wasn't really well done. Uh, quite a few students uh, didn't actually get down to this part. I think only thirty percent or so got this exam. So we'll look forward to it next time. Thank you for listening in.